Two things have happened to me lately, the first of which is pretty cool, and that is that this channel, thanks to you, has started to pick up some traction. I think this time last year I had like 3,000 subs, now I've got 200 and something thousand subs, which is absolutely wild when you think about it, and I am deeply grateful. But the second thing which is related is that I've started to get these really beautiful, well-worded, articulate, vulnerable comments. Sometimes they're beautiful stories, sometimes they're just the loveliest compliments in the world. But every time I have the same reaction, and that is, oh God, I have tricked you into thinking that I'm a good person. Rationally, I know that I haven't tricked anybody, but emotionally, that's not what I'm feeling. Emotionally, I feel like an imposter. And that is what this video is gonna be about, imposter syndrome. Why do we have it and how do we solve it? Those are the two questions that are gonna guide this video. But firstly, a quick definition. This one comes from Jill Corkendale, a Harvard business writer. She says that imposter syndrome can be defined as a collection of feelings of inadequacy that persist despite evident success. What I really like about her definition is she gives us two variables. She talks about the feelings of inadequacy and the evident success. And even if the evident success variable rises, it doesn't necessarily mean that the feelings of inadequacy are gonna drop. And sometimes they might even rise until you don't even feel successful at all. And if you relate to that, turns out you were in very good company. Turns out imposter syndrome is felt by a lot of really great people around the world. Maya Angelou once said, I have written 11 books, but each time I think, uh oh, they're gonna find me out now. I've run a game on everybody and they're gonna find me out but she's Maya Angelou, but she doesn't feel like that. Mike Myers, who bought us Shrek, Wayne's World, and this scene from Cat in the Hat. Anything, anything, yes, anything. Also said something similar. He said, I still believe that at any time, the no talent police will come and arrest me. To hear people who are at this level in their career talk about imposter syndrome makes me realize that the success variable and the feelings of inadequacy variable are completely independent. They're not linked. You could have so much evident success to be in movie after movie after movie and it wouldn't do anything about that feeling. So it makes sense for us to explore the variables separately and that's what this video is going to do. But before we do that, I want to give you a metaphor. And apologies in advance to the person who said the other day that they liked that I had them in swearing. I apologize for this gross swear filled metaphor. All right, let's do it. Inside your brain, there is a machine called the shit and diamonds machine. You pull a lever and it spits out shit and diamonds. Just a combination, half shit, half diamonds, or maybe it's 80% diamonds, 20% shit, or maybe it's 90% shit, 10% diamonds. When you first pull that lever when you are young, it spits out mostly shit. Cause you're young and you don't quite understand craft. That's normal, but we're not told it's normal. So we look at our buckets and they're full of shit. And then we look at somebody who's incredible and we go, why is your bucket full of diamonds? I must just have a broken machine. I must not be good. At this point, a lot of people will get discouraged and never pull that lever again. Then one day they turn 45, have a midlife crisis and realize that they could have pulled the lever the entire time. But should you find yourself lucky enough to push past the discouragement of others and the discouragement of seeing other people's diamonds that you continue pulling the lever, one day in your consistent buckets of shit, you are gonna find the shit and diamonds machine pumps out a diamond, a sparkly diamond in a lump of shit. You look at this and you're like, holy smokes. Oh my God, I finally produced my first diamond. So you go and show it to someone and they go, well, I still see 99% shit. They can't see the diamond and you're like, ah, look at it, look at it. This is also a point where a lot of people just stop pulling the lever. The first time they see their own potential and it's not rewarded. The best case scenario is for the child to continue pulling the lever until they eventually see two diamonds, then three diamonds, then four, then five, then six diamonds in a bucket of shit. The shit to diamond ratio is starting to change. Seeing all these diamonds is very, very encouraging, but the world, still kind of sees a bucket of shit. Then one day, maybe like 15 odd years into cranking that lever, the diamonds outweigh the shit. The machine cranks out more diamonds than it does shit. And people really pay attention for the first time. And this is the moment that people start to get any kind of outward success. And it's a weird feeling because people give you attention for the diamonds, but in your head you're like, but I've been making shit for years, man. It's only a matter of time before the world realizes that my shit and diamonds machine only produces shit. And that's the disgusting way that I like to understand imposter syndrome. An ongoing process of producing diamonds and realizing that they aren't shit anymore. This brings us to part two of the video. How do we solve it? So if you remember in the definition, we talked about the two different variables, the feelings of inadequacy despite evident success. So we're gonna tackle each variable individually, starting with the feelings of inadequacy. How do we get around those? What we're looking for here are the limits that we place in ourselves and the negative core beliefs that we hold. These feelings of inadequacy usually leave clues in moments of conflict or confusion or any time that your reaction doesn't quite seem to fit the situation. Maybe something positive happens. Maybe you get a promotion at work and you just can't 
seem to be happy about it and everyone's congratulating you and you're like, oh no, no, it's only a matter of time before you figure me out, before you realize that I am not worthy of this promotion. Those are the moments where we're gonna find these clues. And from those clues, we start to journal. And just as a caveat, this is just the method that I've come up with for myself, might not work for you. But like many methods, it is worth trying. So you'll need some paper, a pen, and just a lot of honesty. All right, let's do it. When I feel little moments of conflict, these are the five questions I like to ask. One, what do you feel? Two, what need isn't being met? Three, what are you secretly afraid of and why? Four, what's really going on? And five, deep down, what do you believe about yourself? I'll keep going with that promotion example and answer these questions. I feel scared. My need to be average and not stand out isn't being met. I'm scared that if I get the success of the new job, I'll just lose it and be miserable. More to gain means more to lose. On some level, I'm scared of winning because I believe that winning leads to losing. Deep down, I believe that I am a loser who doesn't deserve to win. So those are the five questions and how you answer them. This is us tackling and just sitting with those feelings of inadequacy. I'll do one more example, but this time instead of a positive situation, we'll go with a negative situation. So a very common one, let's say you got drunk and said something embarrassing. What do you feel? Embarrassed and full of shame. What need isn't being met? My need to be perfect in every situation. What are you secretly afraid of and why? I'm afraid that if I'm not perfect, everyone will leave me. What's really going on? I have a belief that I need to be perfect to be loved and that love is conditional. So deep down, what do you believe about yourself? That I am unlovable. So now we have a few feelings of inadequacy and this time it's not just a vague feeling. We're actually starting to put words to it, which is really, really important for part two. Us tackling the second variable, the evident success. This exercise will take you a year. Hear me out. This exercise came from my business partner, Aaron. He was telling me about it that somebody else had told him. And I remember just thinking, God damn, that is smart. And I'd never heard it before. I suspect it might be common in some circles, but in any case, this is what's working for me. So this exercise starts with whatever you answered for that fifth question in part one, whatever you truly do believe about yourself deep down or whatever we've uncovered. The ones from the previous example were I don't deserve success and I'm unlovable. One that I wrestle with and I've noticed myself wrestling with a lot is that I'm not a good person. And I think this came part and parcel from parenting, a few little events, and I know that it was really cemented by an intervention that was had at me when I was 18. I left that intervention doing not only more drugs as a defense mechanism, but just believing truly in a very, very concrete way that I was broken, that I was a bad person, and that I could never be good. In any case, I have this strong narrative that I am not a good person, which is how I started this video, by saying that the YouTube comments that are really, really kind make me feel like an imposter. So here's how I do that exercise with myself as an example. You'll need a big blank journal, a pen, and a year. Every day at the start of the day, write the opposite of your negative core belief. So I would write, I'm a good person. Then you write this magical little word, because. I am a good person because. This one little word is gonna prime your brain into looking for reasons all day. Go about your day, do whatever it is that you do, and then at night, return to the journal. Here you finish the sentence using evidence from your day. If you've got multiple reasons, I like to do them as dot points. If you've got multiple beliefs that you wanna tackle at once, I like to just write them with like a bit of a paragraph spacing in between. And you do this every day for a year. At the end of the year, you'll have minimum 365 reasons why you are a good person, why you are lovable, you know? This technique works for three reasons. The first reason is that we are literally trying to make new paths in our brain. Imagine if you were taking a bushwalk and you're walking along a fire trail and then you took a sharp left into the bush. It's gonna be annoying, there's gonna be sticks everywhere, snakes, I don't know what there is, but you're gonna have to bush bash and get to wherever it is that you're gonna go. If you just went on the fire trail, you know it would be easier. It's the path of least resistance. This is the same as what's going on in your brain. The fire trail is the negative thought pattern. It's been doing that forever to the point where it's made a nice, easy path. To walk straight through the scrub is you trying to combat it. But the more and more that you walk through it, the easier that path gets and the more overgrown the negative path becomes until the negative path becomes harder than the positive path. And now the positive path is the path of least resistance. The second reason is your behavior is gonna change in order to fill out the lists. Once you write, I'm a good person because, if you say, for example, pass a homeless person and you've got some spare change, you're gonna give money to that homeless person so you can write at the end of the day, because I gave money to a homeless person. And it might feel like cheating at first, it might feel like getting runs on the board, but that's just imposter syndrome and really you're making the world a better place. And the third reason is you're acknowledging that the way you think is not fixed. It's malleable, you can change it and you can have a good time in your head. It doesn't have to be hell. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got something from it and if it didn't work for you, that's okay too. I hope something else does, you know? 
it's a, it's a friggin' long journey. Subscribe if you're new. Let me know as well if you want me to continue this sort of more mental health orientated series. I'm quite liking this. I don't know what it is. It really just fills me with a sense of purpose and I feel really good about it. Other than that, have a gorgeous day. Hope you find what you're looking for. Gotcha.